Đúng bao cô này Nhưng bọn ta là người gọi trước Tao là khách quen ở đây Muốn dẫn nó đi Đúng vào sách tao nhé Tao không bỏ đấy Tao mà bỏ tay ra Tao không bỏ Good morning, Washington, and welcome to uh, Dave TV for this uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful day here in the uh, in the Washington area. It's a Sunday, the twenty second of um, of uh, May, two thousand and eleven. I'm just uh, watching some TV there, my favorite Vietnamese show. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Let's get some lights on here. It's kind of dark in here. It started out as a sunny day. And then the, the clouds came out, and the, oh, I'm still, I'm, okay, the, the, oh, I'm dark, I'm dark, I'm dark. Anyhow, who cares? Uh, what I'm going to do today is a special episode of Dave TV, because it's a Sunday, and uh, on Sundays I do a countdown episode of my favorite whatevers. So last uh, Sunday I did a countdown show of my favorite, um, I did my favorite movies, okay, Desert Island movies, so to speak, ten, the top ten, ten movies that, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, if, um, well, let's get this around here, oh, there we go, is that better? Yeah, I think it's a little better. Ten movies that if um, I was left on a desert island with a DVD player and a source of power that uh, I'd be happy, right? So anyhow, uh well, some of the comments, I didn't get quite a bit of comments on that episode, and a lot of people said, hey, Dave, you know, there are a lot of ma macho movies, because I'm a macho guy, you know, Alfred Hitchcock and, uh, you know, James Bond and stuff like that. How about some more chicky movies? So I will do a future episode of more chickified movies. Now, I'm not a big fan of chick flicks, so to speak, you know, some of the dreadful stuff you see in the theaters these days, but I do have a lot of movies that I think women would like. So I will do an episode of that coming up soon. But today I'm going to do my uh, favorite TV shows, okay, especially ones that are out on DVD. So uh, I was going to do the top 10, but I decided to uh, make it the top 15 because what the hell. <laughs> I had a lot on my list. So let's go. These are my top 15 TV shows, okay, American and British, basically. Number 15, da -da -da -da, The Outer Limits, okay. I could throw in the Twilight Zone too, but you know maybe the Twilight Zone came in 16th, but The Outer Limits 15th. Some really good episodes here. There's there's one spectacular episode if you're a radio freak like me called The Galaxy Being. It's actually the very first episode. It's got Cliff Robertson in it. It's where he runs a radio station and he cranks up the power, you know, against FCC regulations and he ma manages to get in somehow get in touch with some galaxy being, and because of the power of the station being so high, he uh, transmits power so that the galaxy being can actually come there and run around and wreck ha wreak havoc all over some Southern California town. Really good episode. It's got a radio station though that's got like a five letter call, five call letters. I forget what it is. It's like K Q F Q F something like that. But anyhow, uh, you know, for Radio Freaks, that is a magnificent episode, uh, The Outer Limits. You know, an uh, interesting thing about The Outer Limits, they only did two seasons of it. That's all. This and another one. This is the first season I got the other one up there on the shelf. Two seasons, Outer Limits. Great, great, great anthology sci-fi stuff. Okay, for number 14, The Mary Tyler Moore Show. Again, for TV freaks, for media freaks, you know, the uh, workings of uh, a quaint little <coughs> television station there in Minneapolis, WJM. And um, wonderful show, you know, the, you know, the news business. I mean, it's not terribly accurate, but a charming little show. And I've always liked it. You know, every Saturday night, we always watched it when I was a kid. It was the Mary Tyler Moore show at 9 o'clock, right after All in the Family. Uh, okay, so that's 14. 13, I had to do one of the Star Treks. I'm always a big Star Trek fan, like the old Star Trek, um, like Voyager, like, you know, Deep Space Nine a little less, but the next generation, I think, is probably my favorite of the Star Trek incarnations, and it's still available all over, um, television today, especially on stations, you know, wonderful sci-fi stations like BBC America, but, uh, you know, again, I'd say a third of the episodes are great. A third of the episodes are, media, uh, are mediocre, and a third are okay. So, you know, I don't know how many Star Trek Next Generation episodes there were. There were a lot, a couple hundred, and a third of them are brilliant. So uh, that's pretty good for a TV show. Okay, so that's what, 15, 14, 13, 12. 
The Larry Sanders Show. This was on HBO back in, um, gosh, when did this run? I don't know. Long t- while ago, quite a while ago. But anyhow, I always liked this show. You know, it's a you know just a wonderful um, look at television talk shows of, you know, the Johnny Carson, David Letterman ilk. Um, you know, all that. And, and Hollywood and the celebrity star system and the network operations and all the pompous asses that run it. Uh, wonderful thing. They did release this finally, all, all the seasons of it, but I haven't been able, you know, I just haven't found the, uh, I've liked the show a lot, but I don't find it, like it enough to want to own every damn episode of it, but I do have the, the best of Larry, and I do have the first season that came out a couple years ago. All right, so that's uh, number, let's see, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. Number 11. <laughs> 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 8. Right. Number 11, The Prisoner. I am not a number. I am a free man. Patrick McGowan did this. Uh, I don't know how many episodes there were. There maybe a dozen episodes of this. Bre- beautiful show uh, in color. Tom Shales, the former uh, Washington Post um, television critic, talked about how these were in black and white when he was reviewing the new AMC version of The Prisoner, which came out about a year ago. But anyhow, the old version is easily the best. Brilliant color. A wonderful show, you know, crazy sci-fi. You know, I always love this, and I haven't watched it in a while, but I'm one of these days I'm going to rewatch all dozen or so episodes of this. Uh, the late great Patrick Mc, Patrick um, Patrick McGowan. Yeah, I was going to say Patrick McEwen. Patrick McGowan and uh, the Prisoner. All right, and now we're going into let's see, that would be number eleven, right? So now we're into number ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Number ten, Green Acres. Again, just a dumb comedy from the '60s. Always liked this show. Uh, got a couple. They released, I think, the first first four seasons of it. Uh, beautiful packaging, but it's really annoying on the DVD because they got double sided DVDs and there's no play all button. They're really annoying. I'd like to see. I'd like to see them re release this on single sided DVDs with play all buttons. It would make it a lot better. But uh, you know, at least it's out on DVD. So uh, really funny. A lot of a lot of very very cutting edge comedy on here of social mores and stuff. Uh, Green Acres. All right, number nine, number nine. Going over across the ocean to the uh, the, br- the land of Britain for uh, keeping up appearances, which you can see a lot on uh, Merrill Public Television. Runs it every afternoon. Uh, Hyacinth Buka. She's uh, one of three sisters who. Uh, you know, she's the middle sister, so she's kind of like the middle-income woman who's trying to uh, pr- pretend to all her neighbors that she's upper class. Fascinatingly funny show. Um, reminds me somewhat of, of the classic Lucille Ball. She's got a lot of that talent, kind of uh, really, really cool show. Anyhow, check it out. Keeping up appearances. I, I don't know how many episodes they did of this. Probably about 40 or so. The British shows, they never quite do as many comedy episodes as American shows, but I like this a lot. Hyacinth Bouquet, Patricia Rutledge there, and uh, and, uh, Keeping Up Appearances. Okay, so that uh, is number nine. Number eight, staying across the Atlantic over in England for Faulty Towers, the great John Cleese, who I actually just saw in a recent episode of Entourage. Kind of interesting. He's getting up there in age. But uh, John Cleese, and I only did 12 episodes of this, but every episode is magnificently funny, and they do run them on PBS every now and then. do catch them, uh, the, the, the fascinatingly funny stuff, uh, you know, uh, the crazy antics of uh, of uh, Basil Fawlty in his uh, crazy run-down, dilapidated uh, seaside motel there in Torquay. Okay, so that's number eight. Number seven, Larry David and HBO's Curb, <laughs> Curb Your Enthusiasm, another fascinatingly great comedy. Um Brilliant. What do I say? You know, if you you know, f word every five minutes. Uh, I love it, love it, love it. Do not catch this in reruns on television because they they cut all. If they cut the bad words out, the show loses all of its humor. You need to see the original uncut versions when they run on HBO or on DVD. Uh, okay, that's eight. Number seven, six, five, four, three, two. No, no, wait. That, that's let's see. That's fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight. That was seven. This is six. Number six. Is Weeds. <coughs> I just think this is a magnificent show. It's run on Showtime. They still got one more season to go of uh, this woman whose husband dies. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> and uh, she turns to selling pot and her crazy uh, neighbors. And you know, it's just a wonderful show. And it, it took a magnificent turn in this, the uh, latest 
sixth season, which was shown in 2010. And uh, always uh, just a wonderful show. Kevin Nealon, the old Saturday Night Live guy, and just a, a wonderful cast. I just met, love this show a lot. And now we're down to number five, Bob Newhart, another uh, show from the 70s, the original Bob Newhart, the seven, uh, with the... Um, Suzanne Plachette, the MTM version, uh, where he's the uh, psychiatrist there in Chicago. Oh, this show is magnificent. They've got four seasons of it out on DVD. And then go rewatch them if you haven't seen them in a long time because they are magnificent. Uh, number four, I'm Alan Partridge. This was uh, Steve Coogan did this uh, where he's a washed up uh, television presenter who's doing a radio show on a on a rundown little station in northeastern England and all of his crazy antics. Uh, Really, really wonderful. This is riotously funny. They've only released season one in America, but you can get season two <coughs> on a DVD. Ah, I must have breathed in some pollen out there. Uh, but you can get season two on the internet, and uh, it's, a, it's a British disc, but you can configure your computer to watch it or your whatever. So I really love this show a lot. And then we're down <coughs> number three, <laughs> Mad Men. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Coughing. Live television, huh? Mad Men, uh, brilliant. I didn't get into this till um, season four actually started running last summer, but I started watching it and just suddenly fell in love with it, and then I went back and watched seasons one, two, and three. Oh, you know, what do you say? It, you know, a lot of television references in this, and, you know, ad agency stuff, <coughs> New York City in the early, uh, <coughs> in the early 60s. Oh, my God, I need a <coughs> pause me, folks. I just came in from a two-hour walk. <coughs> And I got some pollen or something in my throat. Number two, One Foot in the Grave, another British show. Uh, Victor Mildrew is this kind of washed up uh, guy. Who, you know, his career is over and he's at home with his wife and he goes crazy. A wonderful show. <clears throat> you have to see it. Uh, they used to run this on PBS a lot. You don't see as much of it these days, but it is a magnificent show. The humor in this, it's a, it's a mix of humor and pathos and comedy and tragedy and everything. The most brilliant writing in a sitcom I think I've ever seen. So this is number two. Uh, there's a seven, six or seven seasons of this, and it is magnificent. And, of course, the number one television show in Dave's universe, da -da 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 -da, <laughs> The Sopranos. I love this show, particularly the first two seasons with Tony and uh, his mother. Um Absolutely. The ones with the mother in it, uh, Nancy Marchand, who played the mother, she is magnificent. And the relationship between Tony and his mom, I think, is some of the most brilliant television ever. And, uh, you know, get, it, the, the seasons three, four, five, and six, six and a half are also wonderful, especially I love the finale where Tony does get whacked. I'm really sure of that. <clears throat> but um, season, if you really want to catch the show, the cream of the crop, seasons one and two before Nancy Marchand died. And then they, uh, you know, uh, Tony's mother dies in the show at the beginning of season three. I love this show. I love Tony's sister, uh, and this crazy Uncle June, and all that magnificent show. Sopranos, best te best television series ever in my universe. Okay, that's Dave TV for today. <laughs> Stay tuned for uh, more Dave TV coming up in the weeks, where we'll uh, talk about some radio and TV stuff and local watches. So, by the way, Day DCR TV Plus. If you subscribe to it or renew your subscription to it before the end of the month, we have a Memorial Day special, two years, for just $29. So uh, get, get your cards and letters in on that. And thanks a lot for watching, and don't forget to stay tuned.